The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, a gunman runs wild in a parking lot. And all of a sudden, he starts shooting. Ten shots ring out. He then turns to us and begins to open fire. And two innocent bystanders are in his crosshairs. Blood was coming out of my mouth. It was coming out of my head. See their miraculous survival. God's been here. God is taking care of them. Our week of prayer begins today on the 700 Club. Welcome to the 700 Club. More horrible news out of Ukraine. Here's a quote. Something that can't be happening in the 21st century. That's how a member of Ukraine's parliament described filtration camps where civilians trying to flee are being forcibly taken to Russia. More help for Ukraine is on the way. That's the promise from the United States Secretary of State and Secretary of Defense after they arrived in the war-torn country. Heather Sells has the latest. The Ukrainian president made clear to the visiting U.S. leaders what his country needs. The priorities are weapons and support from the United States of America and our partners. In the high-level meeting, Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin pledged to help Ukraine win its war against Russia. They said the U.S. has approved the sale of $165 million in ammunition for Ukraine, plus $300 million in military financing. We are uh, doing everything that we can to get them uh, the, the types of support, the types of uh, artillery and munitions that will be effective in this stage of the fight. We certainly saw people on the streets in Kyiv, uh, evidence of the fact that the battle for Kyiv was, was won. And there is what looks, uh, you know, from the surface at least, to be uh, normal life in Kyiv. But that's in stark uh, contrast to what's going on in other parts of Ukraine in the south and the east. Blinken added that Russia is failing in its goals for the war to subjugate Ukraine. Even so, Russia is keeping up the pressure. Six Russian cruise missiles hit the port city of Odessa over the weekend, killing at least eight, with fresh airstrikes targeting the steel plant in Mariupol, where thousands of civilians and soldiers are trapped. But today, the Russian military said it will open a humanitarian corridor for civilians to evacuate from the besieged plant. Yevhenia Kravchuk, a member of parliament, warned on ABC's This Week of what are called filtration camps near Mariupol, where people trying to flee are being forcibly taken to Russia. We do not know how to, you know, to, to bring them back to Ukraine. Zelensky has also accused Russia of deporting Ukrainians, although that has not been independently verified. A possible sign of hope, the United Nations Secretary General is meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow this week and then with Zelensky in Kyiv. All this is Ukrainians marked Orthodox Easter on Sunday with people in Kyiv praying for those on the front lines and others trapped in places like Mariupol. Even in that city, Orthodox Christians celebrated as smoke rose in the distance from the steel plant. And in Budapest and elsewhere across Eastern Europe, Ukrainian refugees marked the holiday with prayers for their homeland, with many hoping and praying they can return home themselves. Heather Sells, CBN News. A stark contrast of visuals celebrating Easter in the smoke of war. What, you, what Russia is doing right now is just absolutely inconceivable, where you have filtration camps. What they're trying to do is take whole populations and move them. These are things the Babylonians did. This is something that has disappeared from history and now being uh, redone, all in this sort of myth of a greater Russia and Ukrainians are really Russians, and we're going to prove it by taking them and resettling them in Russia. Um, this is, again, unbelievable. I said it before, I'll say it again. Russia's at risk of forever tarring their entire civilization. Uh, the pursuit of this greater Russian myth is, is, is actually putting them on the track for destroying their own civilization. 
How can you recover? How can you possibly recover from the horrors of this war? Well, millions of Ukrainians continue to flee their country. They need a place to get help and support as they arrive in Eastern European nations. Wendy Griffith is on the ground at the border with Poland, where CBN's Operation Blessing is bringing much needed help. A lady came in, she and her young daughter, seven-year-old daughter had escaped from, I believe it was Kharkiv, one of the dangerous areas. And the little girl, it was raining really hard. Uh, and she came in soaked and with this tiny little rain jacket and she asked if we had any coats. Well, thank goodness we have coats here. People have donated coats and they, they came in. And you know, I wanna just give you a sneak peek so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, one of the greatest things about this tent is it is warm uh, and there are hot drinks and there are blankets. And there's just oh, people coming and going all the time. And come on in here and you can see, uh, it already feels so great. It's uh, We have a beautiful little living room. Uh, sorry, I just wanna show everybody here uh, where people can hang out. And we've got a kid's corner with the super book playing. And we've got these beautiful lights to make it fun. We've got people uh, eating, drinking, just uh, getting warm. And so this has been such a busy place during this entire refugee crisis. We've met, I met three women today that uh, had escaped from uh, one of the most dangerous places and they were on their way to Germany and they just stopped in here uh, just to, you know, they've been on a two day journey with no sleep. So they just stopped in here to get warm and regroup. So it's just, we've and met so many fascinating people and they've been so inspiring. Well, that's just part of what Operation Blessing is doing. The most important piece is the warehouse with food, where we're sending truckloads of food to refugee centers in Poland, but also back into Ukraine, uh, that people are, are wanting to stay, and they have every right to stay, and, but they're out of food, they're out of water, and we're providing that for them, and we're doing it in your name if you're part of the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. If you'd like to give to it, it's real easy. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. You can also write to us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Just uh, put Disaster Relief Fund in the memo line of a check. You can also text us, text OB Crisis 71777, or you can go to CBN.com. Either way, do it now. Be part of helping those in need. In other news, Israel's foreign minister has responded to criticism about the, how the government handled the recent Palestinian violence on the Temple Mount. Ephraim Graham has that story from the CBN newsroom. Ephraim? Gordon Yair Lapid told journalists terror groups are behind those clashes at the holy site. And as CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell tells us, their aim is to create trouble in Israel and the region. During Ramadan, Israel has tried to ensure the Muslim faithful could pray at the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount. There has been a dangerous effort underway in Jerusalem. Terrorist organizations have been trying to hijack the Al-Aqsa Mosque in order to create an outbreak of violence in Jerusalem and from there a violent conflict across the country. While clashes have erupted between Israeli police and Muslims, Lapid maintains Israel is not to blame. Hamas and Islamic Jihad extremists burst into Al-Aqsa Mosque in the early mornings again and again. They brought weapons into the mosque, they threw rocks and explosives from within it and used it as a base to incite violent riots. Videos on social media have shown security forces using stun grenades and tear gas inside the mosque. And Lapid points out Israeli police aren't endangering worshippers, they're trying to protect them. The only reason the police have twice entered the mosque in recent weeks to remove them, if we had not removed these rioters, there would have been a disaster. Recently, reports are circulating that Israel intends to change rules governing the Temple Mount. Lapid denies the accusations. Israel is committed to the status quo on the Temple Mount. Muslims pray on the Temple Mount, non-Muslims only visit. There is no change, there will be no change. We have no plans to divide the Temple Mount between religions. Lapid said Israel had blocked provocation by Jews and reports indicate no Jews will be allowed on the Temple Mount probably until the end of Ramadan. 
Several rockets have been fired from Hamas-controlled territory over the last week, and Israel is focused on containing the situation. Israel will not accept rocket fire from Gaza, period. We have a zero-tolerance policy for attacks on our territory. The tension also affected a Christian celebration after Israel limited worshipers for what authorities called safety precautions. Still, thousands gathered for the Holy Fire ceremony at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre on Saturday. Thankfully, it took place quietly and in an organized fashion. For the first time in years, Ramadan, Passover and Easter coincided, resulting in violence rather than celebration. It should be a cause for joy. We should be able to celebrate together, respect one another, enjoy one another's traditions and cultures. That is the true spirit of Jerusalem. Chris Mitchell, CBN News. Here at home, the Supreme Court will tackle a dispute today between a Washington state public school system and a former high school football coach. Administrators fired Joseph Kennedy after he refused to stop praying on the field with students after games. At first, his prayer at the 50-yard line was a quiet moment by himself, but eventually it grew and dozens of students would get involved until his termination in 2015. Kennedy's attorneys say the Constitution guarantees freedom of speech and religion and allows him to pray on the field and students are free to join. But the school district says Kennedy's religious speech could have in the effect pressured students to pray and open the district up to lawsuits. Turning now to political news, former President Donald Trump says his relationship with House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy remains good. It comes after a New York Times reporters released a tape of McCarthy telling other Republicans he would advise Trump to resign following the Capitol Hill riot on January 6th of last year. McCarthy at first denied the quote before the Times reporters released the tape. Some political analysts thought the revelation would damage the relationship between the two politicians, but the president told the Wall Street Journal McCarthy visited him after that conversation and changed his opinion. Orrin Hatch, the longest serving Republican senator in history, died this weekend at age 88. Hatch was a strong conservative on many Republican issues like limits on abortion, and he helped get President Trump's tax cut bill through the Senate. Hatch also stood up for the Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh in 2018 when he was under fire. We can't allow more time for new smears to damage Judge Kavanaugh, his family, his reputation the reputation of the court, and of course the reputation of the country. We cannot allow more, more time for partisans on the left to try to beat Judge Kavanaugh into submission. But Hatch was also bipartisan, working across the aisle with Democrats many times during seven terms that he served in the Senate. Gordon? Well, Senator Hatch was a great American, and many people don't know his story, how he grew up in abject poverty. Uh, but managed to get through his um, just through his talent into law school. But here's the story you may not have heard. While he was in law school, he was married. He had two kids. He and his father took a chicken coop and, and tried to transform it into a cottage. That was their nickname for it, the cottage. Uh, and that's where he lived while he studied for law school. It's absolutely amazing what an American story to go from very humble beginnings to the height of power at the U.S. Senate. It's a remarkable American story, and it's one that we all enjoy here in America, that no one is, is just because of birth entitled to anything. Uh, you make it here because of your skill, because of your determination, because of your perseverance. So I honor him for his perseverance. It's a remarkable story. There. A life well lived. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to thank you for joining us. We've got much more ahead on today's 700 Club, including blood from her mouth and her head gushing all over her body. This woman and her daughter were shot point blank by a crazed gunman in a parking lot. They both needed miracles to survive, and you'll see how they got them. That's coming up. Plus, a trip like no other, a group of diplomats travel to three countries that are part of the Abraham Accords. See history in the making as peace unfolds in the Middle East.
The Abraham Accord seemed impossible just a few years ago. Today, the historic peace agreement is gaining more acceptance and regional support. One example, a unique visit of diplomats to Israel. Chris Mitchell has the story. This group of international diplomats are getting an up-close look at Jerusalem's Western Wall and Temple Mount. Former Israeli ambassador to the UN, Danny Danone, brought them here after spending several days in the UAE in Bahrain. We are all very proud of the Abraham Accord that was signed by President Trump, Prime Minister Netanyahu, and leaders from the Gulf. Today, we see the fruits of those agreements. We took a delegation of senior diplomats, including the vice president of Paraguay, minister of foreign affairs, for an eight days trip to the UAE, Bahrain, and Israel. We feel that it's an important accord, but we can do much more with other countries. And the goal of this trip is to show the world the potential of the work between Israel and moderate Arab countries. Paraguay's vice president felt the trip provided deep meaning for him. Being in the Holy Land is always important for every Christian, and so is the legacy that Danny Danone is passing on to us. We're taking something very important with us. We see that it's possible to have peace between human beings. The likely renewal of the Iranian nuclear deal plus the regime's threat to Israel and the Gulf states cast a shadow over the visit and the region. A Bulgarian ambassador sees the region separated into two camps, one of war and one of peace. I never came here to Jerusalem on a flight from Arabic country. Yesterday I did that. What I think will happen in the future is that the initial interaction between Israel and the Arabic countries, human to human interaction, cultural interaction, tourism, I'm sure will go farther to the next stage where Israel and the Arabic countries will cooperate in the field of security, international security, and will reinforce the camp of peace. For this Croatian ambassador, the trip expanded her view of the regional accords. This trip gave me the opportunity to learn about um, uh, Emirati and Bahrain perspective of the Abraham Accords. And after this visit, I believe that there is a same level, the highest level of dedication for all three sides, for peace, prosperity and uh, stability in the region. That uh, and even uh, wider than that. The trip also opened up new opportunities. For example, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Central African Republic, she signed diplomatic relations with Bahrain during the visit. The Vice President of Paraguay announced that they will open an embassy in the UAE. So we see the fruits of the accords, and I believe that we'll be able to do much more, not only here and in the region, but worldwide. In addition, also, it gave me opportunity to see and to explore the possibilities of uh, joining to this uh, ambitious project. I am certain that there is a wider possibility for the countries like Croatia to join in certain niche and cooperation and to contribute to the project and also to contribute to my country. It makes a difference for everyone, this is my impression, and it can also make specific impact for countries like Croatia. They were amazed because for years, and I know it from the UN, when you say Israel, the Middle East, you think about a conflict. And all of a sudden they came to the Middle East and they saw solutions. They saw that we can actually help them to resolve conflicts. We can help them to improve the lives of their citizens in terms of food security, health, agriculture. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. And this is absolutely wonderful to see. You go back just a few years in history, John Kerry, the Secretary of State in the Obama administration, said that this was impossible, that you couldn't have peace in the Middle East without first peace with the Palestinians. It's amazing how the Trump administration, how the na nation of Israel is showing, well, that's not true. You can have peace. You can have an Abraham Accord. And now emerging from that, Israel is being known as a peacemaker among nations, creating new ties, uh, new solutions for the world's problems, all of which is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy that Israel will be a light to the nations, a light to the nations, not just in innovation, not just in technology, but now also in peace. What a wonderful thing, a wonderful thing, and I applaud it. So uh, hallelujah, let us all continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Terry? Well, up next,
all the car windows blown out, bullet holes in the doors, and blood everywhere. A mother and daughter were sitting in their parked car when a gunman went on a shooting spree. See how their miraculous survival stunned the doctors right after this. Well, today, CBN, Operation Blessing, Regent University are celebrating the life and legacy of my mother, Dee Dee Robertson. The live stream of this celebration starts at 11.45 a.m. Eastern Time. If you'd like to get more information, you can email livestream at CBN.com. There'll be also uh, information on CBN.com, how you can watch this wonderful celebration of life. It's being uh, the, the celebrant, if you will, is Dan Backens, her longtime pastor with Providence New Life uh, Church. And the family will be participating. Others will be participating. And you'll see a video of her life and legacy. But join with us and join and celebrate the life and legacy of my wonderful mother. Tara? Well, today begins our annual spring week of prayer. Now through Friday, April 29th, we're going to be praying for your needs every day on the 700 Club. In fact, you may already have received this envelope in the mail. It includes a brochure called I Will Rescue and Protect You, along with this scripture card to place on your table to remind you of God's faithfulness. So just take a moment, send us your prayer requests so that we can begin praying for you, or you can call us with those requests at one 800 700 7,000 or visit cbn.com. You can also write to us at CBN's Week of Prayer, CBN Center, that's Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. We'll send you the free brochure and scripture card as well when you call. Now, in front of me, you see the many requests that we've already received. We'll be praying for these needs in just a few minutes. But first, Gordon has the story of a double miracle that's an amazing answer to prayer. Gordon? Well, just imagine you're sitting in your parked car with your child. Suddenly, a gunman opens fire on you. That's exactly what happened to Debbie. She grabbed her daughter, tried to play dead, and that's when the shooter sent another round right into the back of her head. I can tell that something really bad has happened to my wife and my daughter. I got really mad and I said, something is really bad here. And I, I don't even know if I want to go see what is going on. August 1st, 2021. Vandy Tulos just left his wife, Debbie, and daughter, Rachel, at a walk-in clinic in Baton Rouge. Rachel has autism spectrum disorder and needed a negative COVID test before returning to school. As they sat waiting in their car, they noticed a man with a gun yelling at a driver in a nearby truck. And all of a sudden, he starts shooting. He then turns to us and begins to open fire. It was the most terrifying thing. Just in that split second, I threw the car into reverse and started backing up. I zigged and zagged frontwards and backwards in an effort to try to stay a moving target. He came around to my side of the car and he shot through the window into my face. I grabbed my daughter and I laid across the shift thinking maybe if I play dead, he'll leave. He shot me one more time in the back of the head. The gunman fired 10 9 millimeter rounds into their car, then ran off and stole a car that had been left running outside the clinic. I get a phone call from her. Not very coherent, couldn't really tell. I knew something was wrong. I turned around and I went back over there. Debbie knew she needed a miracle for her and Rachel's survival. I prayed. I said, God, just please keep me alert and conscious long enough to get her to safety. Blood was coming out of my mouth. It was coming out of my head. By this time, I was covered with blood. So I got out of the car and I walked around and she said, Mom, I'm shot. And she was white as a sheet. And she screamed, was screaming and screaming and just this 
blood curling scream that I hope I never hear again. But she collapsed. And, and again, I just prayed for her and for me. Moments later, Vandy arrived on the scene and tried to make sense of what he saw. All the windows are blown out. There's, there's, there's bullet holes in the side of the doors. And I could see the blood. I could see the blood in the car. After a moment of extreme anger, Vandy was overcome with faith that God was in control. God's been here. God is taking care of them. I have to have the faith right now to know that they're okay, even though I can't see them. I haven't had that come over me before in my life like I did at that moment in time. The gunman was soon captured by local law enforcement. Meanwhile, Debbie and Rachel were rushed to Our Lady of the Lake Hospital in Baton Rouge. Rachel had been shot in the chest. Chief of Surgery, Dr. Michael Connors, describes the life-threatening nature of her injury. The bullet tracked across the midline, hitting really the back of her clavicular head and traversing over to the right there. Any of the major uh, blood vessels hit uh, can be catastrophic. The airway can be catastrophic, uh, as well as the esophagus. Debbie was also treated for her wounds. Thankfully, the bullet to the back of her head only grazed her skull, doing little damage. The bullet to her face followed an interesting path. The bullet went in my cheek, through the back of my, through my tongue, through the back of my neck, and ended up here, where it still is, but um, it missed everything vital. Thankful she would be okay, Debbie waited and prayed for news of Rachel's condition. From the looks of things, we didn't know. You know, we didn't know. I didn't know if I'd ever see her again. Rachel uh, is a, a thin young female, uh, so uh, front to back is, is not very thick. Um, and it, it traversed directly across here, missing uh, all her major organs. My personal thoughts, a bullet traversing from here completely across the midline without the individual having suffered really any injuries at all is amazing. I didn't really have to do anything for her uh, other than just take this bullet out. But outside of that, she required no treatment. Rachel and Debbie share the miracle of being spared from what could have been a life-ending situation. And that is God, that's a miracle. By His grace, by His hands, totally in control, it was done by Him. I'm back to my normal life. I mean, it's just been amazing, His grace. People were praying for us all over the world. I didn't know that until afterwards. Debbie and Rachel have fully recovered. Thankful God spared their lives and heard their prayers. God was with me 100%. He was there for the whole thing. He was guiding those bullets. There's no way we should have survived this. No way, either one of us should have survived it. I don't believe in luck. I believe that God does this for us. I believe that God is our very present help in time of trouble. It doesn't get any more troubling than a, a gunman pointing a gun right at your car, right at your head, pulling the trigger, and then somehow or other that bullet misses. Misses all vital, uh, doesn't cut through any arteries, doesn't cut through an esophagus. A bullet to the back of the head doesn't do anything. It just grazes through. What an amazing thing. What an amazing God. He is our very present help. Isn't that incredible? Now, what does that very present mean? It means he's right here with you. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. And when we have requests, when we have needs, we just come to him. Now, I believe in writing down our requests. I believe in announcing our requests out loud. Uh, the sort of general prayer I'm not a, a big fan of. When you get real specific with God, you understand he can get real specific with you. 
He may not always do it the way you want him to do it, but he comes through, and he is a God who answers prayer. We've got some prayer requests. Here's one from uh, one of the viewers of this show. Healing my lungs from restrictive fibrosis. I am losing vision in my right eye. I need my vision restored. And then here's someone, I need a full-time job, and I need a full-time job with benefits. And this is someone saying, we need rain in eastern Oregon selling cattle because there's not enough pasture to feed them. Someone else saying, I need healing of my knees and ankles so I can walk again. Healing for my daughter. She's losing weight rapidly. Body can't retain nutrients. No diagnosis. All right, let's lift these to the Lord. If you have prayer requests, you can write to us with them. You can also write them down right now. You can also say them out loud. And in that, let us make our request made known. And when we do it in accordance with his will, then we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that he answers. Now, how do you know you're praying with God's will? Well, look to heaven. That's where God's will is being done. Does anybody need a job in heaven? Does anybody need healing in heaven? Does anybody need rain in heaven? The answer is all of that is provided. All of that is provided. So we see God's will, and we pray that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven, done in my life as it is in heaven, done in my body as it is in heaven. Let's do that. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you, and we declare that you are almighty, that you are the one who answers prayer, that you are Emmanuel, God with us, our very present help in time of need. Lord, for the needs that we've read, for the need for rain, the need for a job with benefits, the need for re restoration of vision, the need for restoration of lung capacity, all of the needs before us. Lord, we lift them all to you right now. And we ask that you stretch forth your hand to do miracles. On our own, we can't do these things. But with you, all things are possible. And so we ask for that now, that you make the impossible possible now. Lungs were made to breathe, eyes were made to see, ears were made to hear. We command it now in Jesus' name, be healed and be made whole. Terry, God's giving you something. There's someone you've had recurring heart issues, <clears throat> most specifically arrhythmia, and Every time you think you've gotten a leg up on this and it's done or you found a solution, it comes back. God is healing your heart right now and it will beat regularly in rhythm and consistently you'll not have any more issues in Jesus' name. Uh, there's someone with a hearing disability and it's really uh, never heard of this where you can't locate where the source of sound is coming from. It's like you, 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 you're, you're not hearing it it, with location. Uh, I don't know what that is, but you know exactly what it is and what I just described, because God is giving you that. He's restoring that to you now. In Jesus' name, you'll be able to turn to the one who's talking to you, know exactly what they're saying. In Jesus' name, be healed, be made whole. There are many, many of you who have respiratory problems. Some of you are um, post-COVID in whatever your issues are, but some of you have chronic respiratory problems. You've had them your whole life. Just lift up your hands, breathe in the breath of heaven, exhale, and begin to praise the Lord. You are being healed right now in Jesus' name. Um, I think there's someone, you're suffering with sort of uh, brain fog, and, and you're wondering, what, did somehow you get COVID and you didn't know it? Is this some kind of long COVID? What, what is this? Is this age? What, what is happening to me? Why are my thoughts this way? Why does everything just seem foggy? You are, you are getting clarity of thought, clarity of memory. Uh, your mind is being restored to you now in Jesus' name. 
And someone else, speaking of recurring things, you have an issue with gout. It's so painful, you can barely move. God's not only healing the gout you're suffering from right now, it will not return. You are set free in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being our healer, our provider, our all in all, the answer to every human need. We thank you. And most of all, we thank you for you, that you are the greatest gift we could ever receive. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you've been healed, if you've been restored, give us a call and let us know. 1-800-700-7000. And we remind you, we're here for you. We want to pray for you. We're here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call. And if you'd like to participate in our week of prayer, it's real easy. You can go to CBN.com and you can join in. Or you can call us, 1-800-700-7000. Well, coming up later, he's a rising star in Christian music. He was also once laid out on the floor in handcuffs. Billy Ballinger talks about winding up on the wrong side of the law and the wake-up call that rescued him. Welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN news break. The Satanic Temple is filing a lawsuit against an elementary school in Pennsylvania after it voted last week not to allow an after-school Satan Club. WHPTV reports the temple says the main issue is whether the board discriminated against the organization by allowing some other school clubs in, but not the Satanic Temple's club. A CBN ministry partner has generated excitement for Superbook in the country of Nepal. Compassionate Hands for Nepal recently attended a conference with representatives from multiple churches. The team helped build considerable enthusiasm among the attendees by showing Superbook clips and sharing useful ministry information. CBN and Compassionate Hands for Nepal have worked together to distribute Superbook in that country. One pastor even shared a testimony of how Superbook helped to disciple his parents as new Christians. You can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to cbn.com slash international. Gordon and Terry are back with more Today 700 Club coming up right after this. You turned my morning into dancing. Those are the words of a girl from Lesotho. She and her sister were orphaned after the death of their mother. You're about to find out why she's now singing for joy. For a long time, Tamelo and her sister cared for their mother who had tuberculosis. One morning while trying to feed her, they realized their mother had died. <laughs> I did not understand why she had to die and leave us here alone. She loved us. When she died, I worried about where we would get food and clothes. Yvonne is a house mother at Beautiful Dream Society, which is supported by Orphan's Promise. My heart broke for them. Their mother was gone, so I became their mom. I asked God to give them strength and hope after what happened. When I first came here, I spent a lot of time in my bedroom crying. Mama Yvonne comforted me and loved me like I was her own. Orphan's Promise has supported this home for years. We knew that in time the girls would settle in. Now they're very happy in their new home. All the kids do homework together in the afternoon. Tamelo is doing so well that in just two years, she moved up from third to seventh grade. I feel safe and happy here. When I read my Bible, I feel God's love for me. You turned my morning into dancing and clothed me with joy. I have a mother who loves me and God gave us many brothers and sisters. I thank God for my daughters. I have big dreams for them. Thank you to everyone who supports this work. I pray God will bless you so you can keep doing good things for others. Thank you for loving us and helping us. 
the Bible says God puts the lonely in families because family is a God idea. And that's one of the things that Orphan's Promise does. We are not supporting or building big orphanages. We're building families. And these two girls have been welcomed into a wonderful family of children where they are loved and nurtured and given opportunity and a hope for a future. We want to say thank you because when you support CBN, you support Orphan's Promise. And we are CBN's outreach to vulnerable and orphaned children throughout the world, bringing them hope and a future, taking them from at risk to thriving. Thank you for making that possible. 65 cents a day, $20 a month makes you a 700 Club member. If you haven't done that yet, this is a great time to do it. Our number's toll free. It's the easiest way. You call 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. Or you could go online and do that. Here are some options we have for you. I just mentioned a general membership that's $20 a month, but you could join 700 Club Gold at $40 a month or become a 1,000 Club member at $84 a month. 2,500 Club members join us at $209 a month, and then our founders come in at $417 or more a month. Ask God what he'd have you to do, and then call today. Make a difference in the lives of these children who are so desperate to belong, to know that their lives have significance. They're always shared the love of Jesus. By the way, when you call and join today, will you do it using Pledge Express? That's electronic monthly giving. It means your bank does all the work. You don't have to remember anything. It does save us some administrative costs. And so we say thank you by sending you Power for Life teachings. You'll get one every month, and we think they'll bless you. Call now. Gordon? Up next, a Christian recording artist with a rap sheet. Billy Ballinger tells why, tells why he wound up behind bars after this. The theft of a 9mm handgun and a stash of cash. Well, that's what brought a SWAT team to Billy Ballinger's front door. Billy eventually served two years in prison. So how did he wind up a rising star in Christian music? Billy explains in this interview with CBN's Will Dawson. I know that Winter Jam is the country's largest Christian music tour. In 2020, it was recording artist Billy Ballinger's big break. His single, Tree and the Nails, is his first hit. You call me chosen, you call me loved, you don't see broken, you see more than in Tree and the Nails. It's such a powerful song. Thank you. I just feel right, that's a true honor to get to be able to present a song like that. So many times we feel like we were broken, we've missed it, we've messed up. But I think I think what's important about that song is, is that we get to talk about what Jesus did, not what we failed. When you think about failure in your life, looking back, it's a different story. Yeah. It was rough. My memory of that was rough. Billy was raised in a broken home and as a teenager began running away. I just felt like I was running away to freedom each time. But then you'd get there and the grass wasn't greener on the other side, you know. Um, I just wanted, as a kid, you know, I just wanted to have some peace. Billy was placed in a residential facility. And for a while, things began looking up. That's when he met Jody. We were in choir together. Like the boys wanted to see the girls, the girls wanted to see the boys, and choir was a place to do that. The couple's relationship grew quickly. When they were 17, Billy and Jody left the group home and Jody became pregnant. Though they were married shortly after, the Ballingers fell into the wrong crowd and began selling drugs. I had great opportunities in front of me. I just chose for whatever reason to take the wrong path and it cost me dearly. Billy and Jody were involved in the theft of a nine millimeter handgun and cash. They stashed the money at their home before a SWAT team busted down their door. You're laying on the floor in handcuffs. Yeah. And your daughter, and Jody, you're in the next room. What's going through your mind? That is the moment where you think, how could I think I would never get caught? You know, that's that moment you have a wake up call. I was just thinking, oh my goodness, like it's all caught up to me. It, this is all caught up to us and what do we do now? The couple was arrested and their daughter was taken into foster care. While on bond, Billy got a job in construction. His boss, a Christian, 
invited the young couple to church. I remember showing up that night with the best I had, a pair of old work pants, a ripped up Nike t-shirt. I did leave my hat in the car, <laughs> came in, I was gonna hide in the back because I felt like needles were sticking in my body all over when I walked in. And then just before we went to trial, one night at a service there, they did an altar call. I knew I'd hit rock bottom and I was like, I need God. Billy and Jody committed their lives to God, but still had to face trial. They were both sentenced to six years in prison. I was just heartbroken. You just feel like my wife, I can't hold her, I can't be with her, what have I done? You want to put everything in rewind, you know, reverse and redo everything, but you can't. Billy faithfully sent Jody letters telling her about his love for God and a desire to change. He changed so much that I'm like, it, wow, he is like really changed. It was like a brand new man. I mean, he was not that old person whatsoever. And I credit the Word of God to that because I was just saturating myself with it. It changed me. I didn't change me. It changed the way I thought. It changed everything I did. And I said, I'm not going to be violent no more. I'm not going to party no more. I'm not interested in the drugs anymore. I just wanted my family back. After the Ballingers served two years in prison, the State Board of Appeals granted them a hearing. They brought me and my wife back to that same judge and she looked at us and she said, we have decided to suspend the rest of your sentence. And we went home that day. Billy and Jody were reunited with their daughter and resolved to live for God. And when I got out of prison, uh, I started going to the nursing homes with my church and preaching. I had so much word in me, I'd just go somewhere and explode, you know? <laughs> and, um, but then I joined the praise team and then that desire started to come. And then when I would sing, somebody would say, there's something there. Over the years, Billy recorded seven albums and in 2020 joined the Winter Jam lineup. Today, the Ballingers traveled a country sharing their story of God's grace, told best through his song, Tree in the Nails. The tree in the nails. You know, the music becomes a vehicle for the message. God has truly redeemed us. It isn't like he just redeemed us to go to heaven. It's the fact that He cares about our entire life. It really is true. It doesn't matter how broken it was. If you're still breathing, you still got a chance. That's what that song does. It's saying right now is your moment. That's what that song says to me. And I pray that's what that song says to the people that hear it. What a great message. He didn't just redeem us to go to heaven. He redeemed us for our life here on earth. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And when you see Billy's story, where here he had made the wrong choices, he had, was running with the wrong crowd, that led him into a life of crime. Uh, that crime life led to more crime. And before you know it, you're trying to rob people and steal guns, and you end up with a six-year pr prison sentence. But in that, he found something. He said, I found my bottom. I knew I needed God. For you right now, sitting where you are, do you know that you need God? You need him in every moment of your life. You need him in every decision. You need him to guide every single step, every single way. And when you have that need and you have that knowledge, then suddenly wonderful things can happen where you get into a wonderful adventure with God. For Billy, it was early release. And then after the early release, uh, he didn't go back to his old ways. He says, I'm going to nursing homes because the word is just pouring out of me. And in that, he found, well, I can sing songs. And then he started to sing more songs. And then he started to write his own songs. And then you see the wonderful adventure that God put him on. Now, God has an adventure for you. And it's different than Billy's adventure because his adventure for you is specifically crafted for you. He has created good works for you to walk into. He did all of that before he even laid the foundation of the earth. That's what the Bible says. I find it absolutely amazing that I'm, I'm doing things that God thought about before I ever existed. And all I have to do is wait on him, wait on his timing, seek him, ask him for direction, ask him for guidance. 
you can start that adventure right now. You don't have to run away from God. You don't have to get cleaned up before you come to God. You can just say, God, can you use me? Just as I am, can you use me? Can you change me? Can you show the good things that you have for me? The great adventure of life that you've created for me. If you want this, if you want help with this prayer, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. When you call, I've got something for you. It's called A New Day, and it's in there's a teaching, how do you live the Christian life? How do you get these wonderful blessings? All free, all you have to do is call. Here's a word from Corinthians. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away.